It's been almost two decades since anyone last saw her. 20 years since the oldest of Chuck and Candace Daniels, six children disappeared without a trace. Oh, G and Nikki are so quiet, aren't they? But before she became a ghost haunting old home movies, Monique Nikki Daniels was very much a part of her loved one's lives. She had tons of friends. Everybody loved her. I can even remember guys in my class crushing on my sister and asking why she was so cute and I wasn't. <laughs> Things like that. But Monique was also nursing her own wounds, the kind you can't see but cut the deepest. I know that Monique was um, also really hurting because of the terrible things that had happened already to her as a young girl. Allegations of abuse too horrific to repeat, all at the hands of the four oldest kids' biological father, a now convicted and imprisoned sex offender. So after this horrible situation with your own father, your mother divorces, you get a new stepdad. Did you think that finally I'm going to get a good, safe, and loving family? The first time I met Chuck, um, I remember thinking that finally I'm going to have a dad that's not going to hurt me. And I was so happy and I ran and jumped in his arms and he swung me around and I felt safe. But soon after Chuck and Candace married, they had two more children. A new family portrait began to develop. I feel like we looked like a pretty normal family. Were you? Not in the least. Okay, okay. Both parents were in the military, and according to Angelique, they ran their house like drill sergeants. Not necessarily the best fit for a teenage girl just starting to come into her own. I know she was just crying out for help. She got pregnant, and it was a, it was a big thing in our family, and my parents were very upset about it. According to Angelique, her sister was forced to terminate the pregnancy. Then one day, not long after that, Monique suddenly wasn't there. She did run away from home. My parents looked for her every single day. I remember the phone would ring and somebody had seen her and they would jump in their vehicle and go try to chase her down. But there would be no family reconciliation. Once back home, tensions were at an all-time high and it seemed to be Monique against everyone else. Just how Chuck wanted it depending on who you believe. He made sure to keep us feuding. Then, just a few weeks before Monique's 16th birthday, Angelique, her oldest brother Brian, and her mom got an opportunity to tour with their church choir. We were gonna be gone for a week. It was a strange week. It rained, and I remember my mom was really quiet. After the trip, the three returned home to Moore, Oklahoma, back to where nothing would ever be the same. My stepdad said, she's gone again. And my mom goes, really? Just like that. And it was, something was off. Something was wrong. The house is in a disarray. Now, we're talking about a spotless environment all the time. There were beer bottles. There were cigarette butts put out on the fireplace mantle. There was an empty pregnancy test, just the box on the bathroom counter. But far from being concerned, Angelique says her parents treated Monique's absence like just the next chapter in their gone again, off again relationship. I remember hearing if Monique wanted to be here, she would be. Angelique says it wasn't long after the disappearance that Monique's parents seemed to be erasing all traces of her from their lives. We got new family pictures. Took the old picture down from above the fireplace, put it in the attic, and put the new one up. A picture without Monique? Yeah. And after he hung the picture, he sat in his chair and he said, There you go. It's so much better now. Isn't everything just so tranquil? As the months wore on, Angelique says they were forbidden to talk about Monique. But outside of the home, the missing girl's Aunt Leslie, Monique's mom's sister, was growing more concerned. She called my mom and was asking for the police report number so that she could get Monique in the national database for missing and exploited children. And my mom said, yeah, yeah, I'll get that for you. 
But that wasn't exactly true, because what Aunt Leslie and the rest of the family were about to find out was that there was no police report. What do you think of that? I don't know what to think. Is it suspicious? Yeah, yeah, it definitely is suspicious. By then, it had been about six months since the girl vanished. A gap in time loved ones feared would make it harder to find her. Then again, was she ever even lost in the first place? One day, the phone rang. I just said, hi, Nikki. How are you? The last time Monique Daniels was seen alive was here at the family home in Moore, Oklahoma. That was over 20 years ago. If you believe her parents, the girl ran away, and roughly six months after Monique disappeared, Angelique got an apparent call from her long-lost sister confirming as much. My brothers were standing around listening to me. At night, my mom called all the relatives and said, oh, Monique called and she's doing just fine. And just a week after that call, the Daniels family also got a letter from Monique with a postmark from nearly 200 miles away in Dallas. She was married and had a baby named Chelsea. She just wanted to drop a line and let mom know that she was okay. But to some of Monique's relatives, like Angelique's Aunt Leslie, something was still off. My aunt has contacted the Moore Police Department, wants a handwriting specialist to check the authenticity of the letter because she believed my mom wrote the letters. Then, just a day before Monique's mom promised to take the letters in to be examined, there was a reported break-in at the Daniels residence. The furniture was tipped over. There was some CDs missing, a couple little boom boxes, and the letters. What do you mean, the letters? The letters that were supposed to go to the police department that day for the handwriting specialist to check were missing. But then Angelique didn't need a specialist to convince her that there was no way her mom could have written those letters. And the reason for that was because she wrote them. You know this whole story sounds crazy. I do. And that supposed phone call from Monique, also fake. I wake up every day wishing that it didn't happen. Angelique says her dad told her that after Monique left, her mom became suicidal. He said, and the only thing I can think of is, what if we wrote letters saying that we were Monique so she'd feel better? And I did. According to Angelique, her stepdad then said she faced jail time if she ever told. And with no letters, no Monique, and no one talking, the investigation had nowhere to go. I was scared. I was really afraid for myself, and, you know, I thought that I was going to be wherever she was. Angelique says after nearly two years of lies, cover-ups, and the continuing mystery of what really happened to Monique, Angelique decided to run away from home, and she came here to Michigan to be with family. I cried the entire way here. I'm on the way from the bus station to my aunt's house, I told her about the letters. And she started to freak out. She's like, oh my gosh, what has he done with her? And it kind of dawned on me that he might have done something really bad to her. And she was about to get even more evidence she felt supported that theory. Because when Angelique ran away, her parents filed a missing persons report immediately, which, as the rest of the family was about to find out, was in very stark contrast to how they had reported Monique. He told the whole family that he'd already filed a runaway report. But that wasn't true. That was not true. He lied. Your parents never filed a missing persons report on your sister? Until I ran away from home almost 22 months after. Authorities questioned both parents about the suspicious delay and Chuck even admits to faking the letters with Angelique. But police make little headway. We never were given the opportunity for a lie detector. Did you ask for one? Yes. So they refused to take a lie detector? Correct. In addition, officers find a neighbor who claims he saw the girl get into a truck with a white male on the day she left. True or not, Angelique was too scared to go back home telling her aunt her parents were both mentally and physically abusive. The next day, I went to Child Protective Services, and I filed uh, child and abuse charges against my parents. And what did the court rule? My parents were trying to get me extradited back to Oklahoma, but the judge said no way. I found out later that they pled no contest to child abuse and neglect. 
With Angelique now outside the home and evidence of a cover-up out in the open, both she and her Aunt Leslie go public, appearing on various TV shows to discuss their suspicions surrounding Chuck and Candace. She was murdered somewhere else and brought here. My younger brother, Andrew, called me and said, you gotta come and get me. He was 13. He was to be the third of the Daniels children to run away in as many years. Like his sister, Andrew alleged abuse inside the home. And yet when his parents left to live in Germany for the next 10 years, he went with them. Angelie continued living in Michigan, eventually got married, and over the next two decades, Monique Daniels became little more than a name attached to a phantom. What would you say are the things that happened in this case that make it so difficult for you to investigate? The 18-month delay um, notification to the police department combined with conflicting testimonies and, um, I mean, no body to indicate foul play. Then, years later, Angelique is at home in Michigan when she gets a call from the past. And it's Andrew. And he's crying. And I'm like, what, what's going on? Are you okay? And he's like, she wasn't talking. I said, what do you mean she wasn't talking? And he's like, Ange, I was there and she wasn't talking. And I'm like, I knew he was talking about Monique. And I knew he was about to tell me. Where did Monique Daniels go? 20 years after her parents claimed she ran away, one of the last people to see her alive, younger brother Andrew, is finally speaking out about what he remembers from her last day. I remember having the feeling of that there was something wrong. It began, Andrew says, like a lot of days in the house, with fighting between Monique and her stepdad. Sometime later, Chuck gathered up the boys for a spontaneous fishing trip. Before we left, you know, um, my dad was like, hey, uh, you guys need to go and say goodbye to Monique. But Andrew says Chuck only allowed the boys to talk to Monique through her cracked bedroom door. When I saw Monique, she was on the floor of her, um, in her bedroom, her legs were crossed. She was still. After that, Andrew says the boys left without their fishing poles in the pouring rain. We drove for two hours one way and got off on an exit somewhere and um, went to McDonald's. And then you came home. My dad pulls the car into the garage. And he says things only got stranger from there. And uh, he goes inside the house and leaves us in the, in, the, in the car inside of the garage for, you know, it was like an hour or more. When Chuck finally let the brothers out, Andrew says he rushed to the bathroom and got the eerie feeling he wasn't alone. The shower was closed. There's things that lead me to believe that she was in that bathtub. Before he could check, Andrew says Chuck hustled all the boys into his bedroom. Then, after telling them he was going to go look for Monique, he locked them in for two days. I don't recall the instances after that. But according to something Angelique heard from another brother, at some point while the boys were locked up, Chuck came back, then left with one of the twins. He said, the only thing I can remember is being in dad's truck and there was an oil barrel in the back. That's all I remember. What was in the oil barrel? My sister. I believe that Charles Daniels killed my sister, Monique. And then I believe he put her in an oil drum and he drove her out to where he took her to and he buried her there. Angelique, you know, the, the thing is, it's a very serious allegation to claim that your stepfather killed your sister. Yes. But Angelique wasn't backing down. In fact, when Andrew first told her his story just a few years ago, she convinced him to go with her to the police. Officers even dug up the family's old backyard based on rumors Monique might be buried there. We didn't find anything. What do you have on your hands? Is this a missing persons case? Yes, it's a missing person case. We have two siblings who are saying they believe their stepfather killed their sister. 
Isn't that enough for you to open up a murder investigation? Well, unfortunately, we don't have a body to prove that. So then, what really happened to Monique Daniels? If she really did just run away, why did her parents wait nearly two years to report her missing? And one of the biggest questions of all, what do Monique's parents think about their daughter's mysterious disappearance? We came here to Tampa, Florida to ask them. How are you? My name's Anna Garcia and I'm from Crime Watch Daily. We've been trying to reach you and your husband Chuck about Monique's disappearance. Uh huh. Do you have a few minutes to talk with us? No, um, not really. But when I pressed Candace about Angelique and Andrew's allegations, she did have this to say. Whatever happened, it's in God's hands. Thank you very much, and then we're going to ask now that you leave. But just one thing, you know, the allegations are serious that your husband could have killed your daughter. Angelique said that your... And Angelique is a really messed up young lady. But like I said, before you start taking him, um, and asking me about anything, you need to just, uh, I think, leave the property. Okay. Before I call the police. All right. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, Angelique is not a reliable source. It was a dead end, but not long after that, another vehicle pulled into the driveway. Are you Mr. Chuck Daniels? Sir? Hi, are you Chuck Daniels? You are? Anna Garcia from Crime Watch Daily. We're doing a story about Monique, who's been missing. Angelique and Andrew have made some very serious allegations against you. Under advice of counsel, I have nothing to say to you. Angie, I love you. Sorry about that. Stay off my property. So what do you think happened to Monique? In God's hands, I don't know. Neither parent has ever been charged or named as official suspects in Monique's disappearance. There are a lot of family secrets here. Yes. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe, maybe I need to just move forward. Maybe I need to just let this all be in the past and, you know, keep it hidden too. But I can't, I cannot do it. I have to let people know that there was a Monique Daniels.